Uh, I'm Claire Shanahan, I'm Head of Arts at Book Trust and we're at the London Book Fair 2014. Book Trust is at the fair for the next three days to uh, run a range of promotional events. Uh, for instance, we have programmed six children's book seminars covering topics such as uh, series fiction versus individual titles and uh, the role of children in judging book prizes. Well, Book Trust works so much with publishers and agents with the whole trade, so it's really important that we have a presence at the fair. Programming these seminars um, not only allows us to make contacts with different types of people, but also to ensure that um, everyone's informed about the work that we're doing and we're presenting the most recent research that we have. But, so some of the headline findings give you a fix that people said they never read physical books. 71% interestingly said they never read physical books. 18 percent said they never read ebooks. books fifth never buy physical books at all. And then the fifth book is a And something that very much reflects the times in which we live uh, and other challenges on how we spend our time. 35% said they didn't have time to read. Let them make the choice. It's all about making them make the choice and facilitating an atmosphere in which they feel happy to be able to make the choice of what they want. So reading for pleasure is about pleasure and not about a guilty pleasure of having something. And those of us who've ever been in a classroom, we all know that we say, well, you have to be able to justify that opinion. And there's times, as a person who edits, that I think I just don't like this. And I can't really tell you why. And sometimes it's because something very subtle is wrong do with voice, say, or pacing, but we quite often ask children to justify these, that their, their likes and dislikes, as opposed to quite reasonably having a like or a dislike, I don't like coffee, I don't like tea, whatever kind of way, we don't, we don't expect adults to say, well, you know, you should like Wolfball, how dare you say you don't like Wolfball? And, um, you know, they are a resource as well as a great source of happiness and contentment of coming to terms with what's going on in lives. Because you can't sort everything out and, you know, as a young person if you find other examples of how people have come to terms with similar or different challenges, then that actually gives you the internal resources and uh, the personal capital to deal with what life throws you in the future. We were trying to get kids reading and so if you read the first set of Rainbow Magic books or the first set of Beast Quest books, it's one story told across six books. So it meant that each of those instalments, if you like, was really accessible for the reader and gave them hopefully enough to hook into and want to read the next book. So that's 20 odd thousand words that a six-year-old girl was reading. With Beast Quest, it's 60, a 60,000 word book effectively delivered in six, in six instalments. So actually, although they all came out together, in reality they were reading one book. I think successful series publishing, you do need to um, publish books in fairly quick succession, one from the other, because essentially we're, we are talking about kids and they grow up very fast. And so if you've got them interested in something in August, by Christmas they could be onto something else. It's always been the unexpected that is the big success. No one would have predicted Harry Potter. Lemony Snicket, completely left field. These are all, you know, Northern Lights. Who in their right minds would have published those big books for kids? That's insane, isn't it? No, it isn't. It's an inspired bit of publishing with, a, with an awesome piece of fiction. So, you know, I, I would say if you're writing, look to innovate. Don't do me too. Um, but I, for me, most importantly, it was about going and, and talking to as many teens as possible about books and reading and I love books and reading and I really do believe that if any sort of teen says oh I don't like reading then I just think you haven't found the right book for you yet it's out there I promise you they are out there because we have so many fantastic writers in this country and I think it's about celebrating those and making sure that our children and our teens know about them. That's what's so great about teenagers today is that they've got this attention span which is whilst it is shorter for having always being on something different they're, they're embracing everything all at the same time. They're playing games online. They're, you know, writing their own stories on Wattpad and uploading them and, you know, contributing to things like that. They're making YouTube videos. They're doing, and they're reading, they're still reading books. I just think that they're reading a different kind of book um, to what they were reading five years ago or ten years ago. You know, teen fiction, you have to, you know, there's, there's a lot of different kind of books out there for teens. There never used to be a sort of team books per yeah. se. It was kind of children's books and then it was adult books. Yeah. And you had the occasional ones like kind of a catcher in the rye, etc. But there really wasn't a, a sort of team 
book market. Um, I know as a teen, I was constantly questioning the world, my place within it. It was me trying to find out who I was, the, the society I lived in, make sense of that, make sense of the world I lived in. And I, th and, and I still feel that teenage books are an excellent way to address that. So and I believe even when you're at your lowest moment, there's always hope. You have yeah. to hang on to that. And so I would hope that even if my, you know, some of my books don't have a happy ending, they have a hopeful ending. And I would never write a book that didn't have a hopeful ending. And even if the hope um, lies in the next generation and you hope the next generation will have it better than you, yes. I absolutely believe in that. And I would never write anything that didn't at least have that message.